Good morning. In this video, I'm going to deal with uh, some false teachers and the uh, view of uh, cunning craftiness that these teachers are out there very secretly and cleverly wording uh, the uh, gospel message to make it a false gospel. And people aren't aware of it thinking that's a true gospel. Uh, first, let me show you uh, a uh, sweatshirt, new sweatshirt that uh, Brother in Christ sent me from England, from the Royal Marines there. So, it's a great sweatshirt. Okay, sent me another one too, and I want to thank him for that, uh, about sending, sending me that switcher from the uh, Royal Marines. That's uh, fantastic. But this is uh, uh, Grace and Focus, and the people from uh, the uh, 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 Grace Evangelical Society, a lot of these guys, when you bring up the fact they're teaching a false gospel, will often come on there and whine, uh, saying, oh, we'll be misrepresented, represented and we're not, we don't teach this, we don't teach that. Uh, and um, the fact is, is that, and some people who will actually support that uh, and say, oh yeah, they, be, they are being misrepresented. No, they aren't. They're teaching a false gospel. They're teaching a crossless gospel. They believe, in fact, that a person can get to heaven without even hearing about the, uh, the cross and the resurrection. They believe those are just doctrinal issues that they learn after you're saved. That's a fact. You go on their website and look at it, and they, they cleverly worried everything, but that's exactly what they're teaching. This is from the magazine Grace and Focus. This is from Wilkin. He goes here, this is, uh, this, uh, the specific object of saving faith is Jesus' promise of eternal life. That's what they're telling you to believe in to be saved, that Jesus Christ gives you eternal life. Not in his death, burial, resurrection, and not in him. The object of saving faith is in a person. You've got to believe in him. Now, you believe in him because of what he did. So you believe in first what he did for you on the cross, and then the logical consequence of that uh, is going to move, believe in him as a person. He saved you, and you're putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very logical and very orderly. God has set it out there. I mean, you don't believe in a person, you don't believe what he did, unless you first believe in what he, uh, you don't believe in him unless you first believe in what he did. That's what John, uh, I mean, uh, Romans 3, 24 through 26 is laying out very clearly. Now, there are people who stop at actually what he did. And they just give the message of the gospel, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again. And they'll stop there, and they're not putting their, their faith in Jesus Christ himself. Uh, and therefore, they stop short of actually believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're not saved. You've got to believe in him. You've got to believe in what he did. He's, that's, where, that's where redemption and eternal life lies in, in a person. But they, their object of faith is the promise of eternal life, John 3.16, uh, John 6.47, and John 11.26. They'll say these passages all say that who, who, whoever believes in Jesus Christ has a everlasting life. Yeah, but those passages are, 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 are based on the fact that you're believing in what he did for you and believing in him uh, for your salvation. The object is the, the, uh, the content is not the, uh, is not the, is not the eternal life. The object is believing in him, trusting that he died for your sins on the cross. He says here, while free grace people believe in and proclaim the gospel and the resurrection. See, they, they believe that, and that's how it's deceptive. But they're not proclaiming as part of the gospel, as part of the message, saving message. They'll actually say it's part of the gospel because they can't get around that from 1 Corinthians 15. What they'll say, it's, it's the, the saving message, is just believing that Jesus Christ gives eternal life. Uh, we do not say that all who believe Jesus died for our sins and rose again have eternal life. Well, they don't, because they got to believe in Jesus Christ himself. So that's true. See, it's very uh, uh, craftily uh, worded uh, and gets you, get you very uh, deceived if you don't understand exactly what they're saying. Why not? Because someone can believe these things, those things about Jesus and also believe in salvation by works. That's very true. You can add works to something, uh, and then you destroy the, uh, the issue of faith alone. That is not a saving message, but you have to have a saving message. This is very, very clever. They throw in things that are true in order to deceive the people. You say, that's right. A person can believe in death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ and then add a work system and therefore negate uh, the issue of salvation. But the, that doesn't, make, it doesn't change the gospel to another gospel of just believing that Jesus Christ gives you eternal life. That's what these guys shifted to. That's what Zane Hodges shifted to in Wilkin. Teaching the gospel has never been taught before. And what these guys want to do is they want to uh, uh, circumvent the requirements of being uh, saved. And there are people who believe in the message of the, uh, the gospel 
and aren't saved because they haven't put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ himself and doing it, trusting to solely in him without works, just by faith alone. A lot of things can corrupt the gospel. A lot of things can come in. That's why it's very clearly laid out in uh, Romans 3. Very clear. That's what we have to believe in. Believe in what he did for you and then believe in him and trusting solely in him for your salvation. But that is the requirements of salvation. This crossless gospel that's going out there, and then there's another gospel that uh, is preached by guys who, uh, uh, who call themselves grace believers, and they stop, they stop at the blood. They stop, well, I just believe Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did, and therefore, because I'm believing in that, I'm believing automatically in Jesus. No, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, in him. You're putting your trust in him personally for your salvation. That is what's required. This isn't complicated. It's very logical and orderly. But these guys, they see a false thing and then they throw another false view. That eternal life becomes the object of saving faith. That's a result of saving faith. You're not trusting in Jesus Christ because he promised you eternal life. You're trusting in Jesus Christ because he died for your sins on the cross. He took your place on the cross. And because of that, because of that, then you're trusting in him as your, as your Savior. You're trusting in Him because He is the one who saved you and you're trusting in Him for your, your, your uh, salvation. That is what's required. Require. That is the gospel. This crossless gospel is out there now that take away, takes away the, uh, the object of saving faith is the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and what He did for you on the cross, the blood atonement, and, and switch it to the, uh, the idea that He gives eternal life, which is true. But that's not the object of saving faith. That's a result of saving faith. And then there's another group out there who want to stop short at the issue of the just simple blood atonement and think, well, if I believe in the blood atonement, then I'm automatically believing in Jesus Christ. No, the object of faith is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who you have to believe in in order to be saved. You're placing your faith in him because of what he did for you on the cross. You believe what he did for you on the cross, and then you move to saving faith, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But beware of these guys. Beware of these, how subtle Satan is. And a lot of guys get upset at, at when uh, people point these things out and say, oh, is making this thing too complicated. It's our responsibility to point out the craftiness that Satan's involved in, how subtle he is in order to remove the, the true gospel and put a little leaven in there in, in order to destroy it and, and to uh, distort it. And a lot of people are supporting these guys because they don't want to look at these things closely and what's required. And Romans 3 is very clearly laid out uh, that what's required is faith in the blood. You believe in what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, died for your sins on the cross, took your place on the cross, and rose again from the dead. And then because you believe in that, then you place your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You trust in Him, you believe in Him, that's it, that's all you're doing now. You say, I, I trust fully in Him because He's the only one that can save me. Nothing else. You don't. You, you, the content of the object of saving faith is not eternal life, as in found in those passages in John. And nor, nor can you stop short with the blood and say, "Well, of course I believe in what Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried and rose again from the dead, and I'm now saved." No, you've got to move one one thing further: is moving trusting in Him as 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 your Savior. You got to trust in Him as your personal Savior. That is it. Now it's not complicated. It's not hard. It's it's a simple simple message. What's made complicated and hard is that false gospels have come in, come in and corrupted it and uh, distorted it and very cleverly worded in order to deceive people and thinking they've done enough. And this is like uh, the faith alone. This is two groups that are faith alone uh, who basically distorting the gospel by omitting, omitting something that needs to be put in the gospel. Even though they're claiming faith alone, they've omitted what they need, what you need to do, which is simply believe in what Christ did for you on the cross and then believing in Him uh, as your personal Savior, trusting in Him alone for salvation, because only in Him is eternal life. He's the one who can give you eternal life, but you've got to trust in Him for your salvation because of what He did for you on the cross. Not the fact that He gives eternal life. That's not the object of uh, what saving faith. The object of saving faith is Jesus Christ Himself because He died for you on the cross took your place place on the cross, died for your sins, and now you're trusting in Him for that blood atonement, for the uh, uh, for your justification, uh, and the fact that uh, uh, your sins have been forgiven because you've placed your faith in Him. Amen. Thank you.